Welcome to Talking Giants presented by DraftKings. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennock. And we have a lot, a lot, a lot to get to. We have an interview with Arch Stapleton later in the episode. Uh, the Giants brought back Alfred Morris. Alfred Light Nation, stand up! We're definitely getting into the Kelvin Benjamin story and everything that went around that. I'm actually really excited to, to kind of laugh at that story. And we're going to have to start it off with Shane Lemieux leaving practice on, on a cart. Uh, no details on on how, how severe the injury is. But Justin, you're in the Bronx at the John Boy Media office. How are you doing? Yeah, Bobby Skinner, this is like the first time that I'm recording an episode from the Bronx. Um, I'll show you the sign that usually is behind me, and I did some decorating. So here, wait. Weekly Dumb. They do the dumb show in there? They do the week. Well, I don't know if they do the weekly dumb show in here, um, but I thought about keeping the weekly dumb poster up because I am a dumb person every week. So I thought it actually fit. No, but a fun day. Um, computer actually is working and it, and it moves kind of fast. unlike the one that I have home and training camp training camp news uh, is not a, is not making me feel awesome right now and you were trying, trying to tell me you were trying really you were trying to tell me that like that like this is just how it goes but i don't believe you i'm, I'm getting weird kind of vibes right now from how training camp starting how are you i'm doing good i'm doing good we just like like i said we, we got a lot to get into so we'll we'll get into it. but before that this episode was brought to you by robert woods from um, the rams Funny enough, you would think like, you know, like there's, we have two new patrons. One's name is Robert Woods and the other's is Jordan Fuller, which is crazy because both those people have names from the ranch. Justin, who are these fat blobs? Mm, they went to patreon.com backslash slash talking giants, $2 a month. Um, Bobby's about to do a raffle, like right after we record this for a free shirt. So if you are a patron, there's a chance you can win a free shirt possibly up to twice a month because Bobby does the raffles twice a month. Bobby also sends you a magnet once you sign up. He'll message you on the Patreon, so make sure that you check your uh, check your message on Patreon. And you get to watch the shows as we record them live, which is going to be really fun for training camp. And I'm Bobby and I were kind of feeling good talking to the chat beforehand and reacted to some news and having people in here. So patreon.com backslash talking giants. Thank you to our patrons. All right, Justin. Shane Lemieux, Shane Lemieux yeah, yeah, yeah. leaves practice on a cart with a knee injury. Um, I wouldn't get too dramatic on the cart because, you know, we talked with Arch Stapleton later and he's like, it's, it's a long way. So if a guy has a knee injury, you don't want him walking, you know, half yeah. a mile to into the training room. There's three, like there's like three fields on that field. Yeah. But man, this is, a, this is, uh, is it, it's kind of tough because honestly, you can argue that Zach Fulton, if you look at their last seasons, was better than Shane Lemieux. But at the same time, it's like, well, Shane Lemieux is was a rookie. And, you know, we expect Shane Lemieux to get a little better. And we're, we're banking on him being better. And he's a good run blocker. So it just, at a position the Giants were very thin at, offensive line, where it's like, you know, that's the one position on this team where you kind of feel bad about. Where it's like, I don't know if I feel good about this offensive line. It's like, we kind of trust Andrew Thomas to be good but like besides that and and nick gates but besides that it's like it's very worrisome to see what what's going to happen you're putting a lot of faith in these guys and to lose anybody from that group uh it's definitely not good for the giants yeah and frankly that this is why the anxiety and i'm just speaking solely from a fan here let's let's put away the you know the justin uh, you know analyst cap or whatever you know you want to label us as but Fan, feeling, heart, not brain, is nervous time. And I know it's just the start, but as a fan, you want everything to go right. And right now, things are not going right. And frankly, a, there are a lot of things in the areas in which we really need guys to kind of be here and be ready to rock and roll. You know, this even includes the Matt, the right tackle with Matt Parrott, um, who was struggling with something since April. But again, same thing with Lemieux. As of right now, as of you know uh, Thursday evening, we don't know much about either of those kind of injuries. So, but still, the area that we need people to be here, the people, the area that we need people to rock and roll, they're not, and worrisome. It's 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 worry season. Yeah. So we obviously have to wait to see what happens with Shane Lemieux before we, you know, just to to actually you know 
know what's going to happen. Like, you know, he could be out a week. He could be out a couple of days. He could be out for, you know, the dreaded season. We don't, we don't know at this point, but let's, let's just say he's going to miss some time. Some time. What do the giants do? Well, in practice and the, you know, it was in practice. They put Kenny Wiggins in there who a lot of people didn't realize was on the roster in Kenny Wiggins, but he was actually been on the roster for some time. You know, the giants added him mid season. In fact, they added him the week before the trade deadline, which made everyone think they were going to trade Kevin Zeitler. Um, and that's why Wiggins was there. I would say I would have to see that for another practice to believe that Kenny Wiggins is going to be the guy to step in. Cause I really think it's just Zach Fulton was the backup right guard. Kenny Wiggins was the backup left guard. So left guard went down, they put Wiggins in because Fulton's played left, you know, he played left guard guard in 2016. He played center in 2017. You will Hernandez has played his entire career at, at, at left guard. You know, he's playing right guard now. So I wouldn't really buy into the whole, Oh, actually Kenny Wiggins is going to be the guy to step in there. Um, until we actually see a couple of practices of like, no, they're actually Kenny Wiggins is running with the ones. Yeah. And he was here last year, and you know, I like you said, a lot of people forgot it. I mean, hell, I forgot about it. I'm like, oh, Kenny Wiggins, is that, is that the guy that we picked up midseason last year? Yes, it is. He only played one offensive snap last year. Um, in the year it's been since 2018 since he played more than 50 percent of, of the offensive snap. So he does have pro experience. Um, he mostly started over 30 games, but it, most of his starts have been at right guard, too. Mostly at right guard. Yeah, that that's that's what I was gonna say. So, um, but Zach Fulton probably is the better player because he started last year and he's coming. He has just more of a, a pedigree as a starter in the NFL, at least I feel like. Um, but I think the familiarity with the system and the fact that a guy went down and then mid practice, it's like, all right, you're just going to be the guy that's just going to run with the ones, especially since this is the second day, they're not even in full pads yet. So. Right. Yeah. And, and again, and let's talk about Zach. Fulton. Let's talk about Zach Fulton a little bit. And I do, I do recommend people go watch his film breakdown we did in, during free agency. But he was like a decent starter, and then this past year he gave a bunch, a bunch of sacks. Um, like I said, you can legitimately think like there's a legitimate like argument to make that Zach Fulton's better than Shane Lemieux if you're just looking at at them the past past season. But again, we want Shane Lemieux to progress and get better, which we all yeah. think he can. You know, we love him as a fifth round pick. He got, he got thrown in early. You know, I don't think anyone, any of us expect him to play year one. So, but it's, it's not panicking that like, oh, Zach Fulton is starting, but it also is panicking because like, okay, what happens if someone else misses a game? Okay. And then you're, you know, who are we playing at guard? Are we playing Chad Slade? It's, it's Kyle Murphy thrown in. And until we see some of these guys come in and play and, and maybe do some, do something in preseason, it's very panicky at a spot that was already thin. Yeah. It's also, you know, Justin, stop complaining, stop whining. It's only the first week. Yes, it is the first week. I'm still John, Jonathan Harrison's on some sort of lists, correct? Yes. He's on the pup list as, pup list as well. You know, and I saw some beat reporters throwing something out there that Gates might have actually taken a few reps at guard. But again, well, Joe so Judge said that, like, when they were asking about, like, Nate, if he's going to play left, right, or, you know, they said, Nate or, or, Nick. or, or, or Will, no, Nate, when they were asking if he's going to oh. play left or right tackle and Will, if he's he just going to play right guard. They always, like, Joe Judge is like, we, we train our guys all over the place. You want to, we want to, you know, play Gates at guard. So, if they had, if they like Jonathan Harrison more than Fulton, then yeah, you could do that where you slide Gates out. Um, if okay, say Hernandez went down in the game and Lemieux, you know, was out, I do think at that point you would probably move Gates out the guard and put a Harrison in there instead yeah. of someone else, or or maybe they do trust Wiggins. I don't know, but it's 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 kind of frustrating, and it would suck for Will Hernandez to spend this entire offseason getting ready for the right guard position just to go back to twenty left pounds, side. and then within a week he's like back at the left guard spot. Because I do think, I do think, if Shane Lemieux is out, I do think they would slide Will Hernandez the left guard where he's played his entire career, and Zach Fulton would be the right guard where he's played the majority of his career. Like that's if, what would make the most sense. If Shane Lemieux misses the first four games of the season, which odds are, you know, I think the first four games of the season is you're on some sort of list. You know, maybe you're on a a, a, a certain kind of pup list that allows you to come back or um, whatever. You know, I don't know all the lists, but There's week three, four. The, the three-week IR is still available. The, the three-week IR. And when he comes back week three, week four, do you still slide Will over for a couple of weeks and then you have him move to right guard 
know, 25%, almost 25% through the way of the season? Or do you no. try to rock and roll with somebody else at left guard? What do you do? If, if Shane Lemieux is going to come back, you, I would keep Will at right. I agree. Instead of trying to play musical chairs at that point. That's you use your swing guard and Zach Fulton after yeah. to, to fill in. He's the veteran. Um, you know, don't have, don't have, uh, don't affect Will Hernandez this season. Uh, just because Shane Lemieux season has been effect, affected, you know, so uh, that that's, that's the way I would go about it. Yeah. However, I mean, last year, I mean, the, the, the giants were kind of crazy with their offensive line and they're not afraid to put somebody in that maybe we don't expect or, you know, pull guys for a series, put a guy in for a series, take him out, put the other guy back in. So whatever, you know, whatever we think with the offensive line that, it, it, you know, maybe it's just a plug and play here, plug and play there. They're not going to be afraid to do some crazy things. And maybe we'll even see some crazy things throughout the preseason, throughout, you know, throughout training camp or whatever the, the guys on the beat, they can tell us and whatever they can see. So I know that's tough, but they're not afraid to do unconventional things with their offensive line configuration. Cause it's what we saw last year. Justin, speaking of last year, Alfred Ite Nation. Mm. Oh, Stand yeah. up. Yeah. Alfred Morris is back, baby, according to Tom Peloroso. Alfred Morris is expected to sign with the New York Giants. Alfred Ite Nation is back. Gallmanite Nation, suck it. He's probably going to get cut by the 49ers. Maybe we'll let him come back on our practice squad or something. Um, 238 yards last year on 4.3 yards per carry, 27 yards per game. Corey Clement, Gary Brightwell, Mike Weber Jr., and Sanjo Platzkammer are the other running backs behind Devontae Booker. Justin, Alfred has just as much chance as anybody as this running back three spot, which, again, like I, if there's any spot where you're like, this one is just wide open, it's running back three. And I don't, you know, remember they brought Alfred Morrison last year on the practice squad. I'm like, why did you put bring Alfred Morrison in the practice squad? Wouldn't you bring a young guy? Well, they actually plan to play him. So I don't think they brought in Alfred Morris to be – the fourth or fifth running back in training camp. I do think they're like, it's he's legit got a good shot at RB three as anybody. Yeah. I or RB four if Saquon misses time. Yeah, I certainly agree. Um, typically, you know, at least if it's Bobby and Justin designing the roster, which thank God we're not, thank God we don't have that job. If it's Bobby and Justin kind of designing the roster, we want the running back three to kind of be an exciting guy, but the giants and I don't want to say Joe judge, but I think the giants have just shown a pedigree of, you know, we're not going to prioritize running back three to be really anybody exciting. It's just a guy that can come in here and fill a role that we want him to fill. Now, do they want their running back three specifically to play special teams? Because Alfred Morris isn't going to bring that. Alfred Morris, what? I feel like, I think I just looked on pro football reference. He has like four special team snaps in his entire career. So that's not going to happen. But again, you know, we, we just did this with Devontae Booker's PPP. Go check that out, by the way. You know, if, the, if they're going to prioritize their backup running backs and – those guys are going to get carries. And like Bobby said, they're going to be used. Then Alfred Morris 100% does have a very fair shot at winning that backup running back job. Cause you already have two receiving backs in a way. Saquon Barkley is definitely a receiving back. And even if he's getting carries taken away from him, he shouldn't necessarily be getting routes taken away from him that much. And Devontae Booker is decent enough of a receiver where maybe you don't need three receiving threats coming out of the backfield. And Alfred Morris, like you said, showed that, you know, he was just fine last year. My favorite line last year, and actually Giants things, uh, all things Giants on Twitter, he just replied to me and he just reminded me of this take that Alfred Morris at this point in his career is just so goddamn slow that he actually allows blocks and the play to develop before he like crosses the line of scrimmage and before he like really fully hits the hole. So that's where Alfred Morris is best. He is so slow that he allows the play to develop in front of them. So I'm and actually kind of happy that he's back. Alfred Morris got around on the edge a few times, had some 20 plus yard run you know, behind, yeah. behind Nick Gates. Okay. So do not s slander my guy, Alfred Morris. And I should have mentioned they could, they waved take one Mizzle running back who just played with the bears for a little bit to, uh, to make room for this move, I, I would assume so. Purdy was still in food from the cafeteria again. Hold on, hold your horses. Hold my horses. RB three, quick. Who? Alfred Morris, Corey Clement, Gary Brightwell, Mike Weber Jr., Sandro Platzkammer. Who are you picking? I'm still sticking with Corey Clement. Mm, this is where preseason comes in, and this is where preseason is going to be exciting. Still got two weeks for that, so I need I your know, take I now. I know. I know. All right. Well, I'm. I'm gonna, mm, Corey Clement. Yeah, because he's, he's who I want. So 
There you go. Um, and and I I mean maybe you could you want to bet on it because DraftKings Sportsbook is not only my favorite sportsbook but also America's top rated sportsbook. Speaking of America, our top athletes are over in Tokyo competing for their gold, and DraftKings has a medal worthy for just my listeners. Listen to this great offer. By the way, should we debate about um Simone Biles? Like, nope. You I'm not say looking... she's weak, and I say she's courageous, and let's go back and forth for thirty minutes. Nope, not looking to get in trouble. Place any <laughs> pre-event wager. Just a conversation. I like. There's times where Twitter's like having this big conversation, and I'm just like, I'm not checking into this. Like, my I, mother I, has an interesting take on it. I, I don't care. <laughs> Tell your mom I do not care. Place any pre-event wager of $1 to be eligible to cash $100 in free credits. If America wins any medal this year, that's 100 to 1 odds on an American athlete to stand on the podium and receive gold, silver, or bronze this week. 100 to 1 odds on an offer like this doesn't come around often. So sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook now to get in all the action. I love using DraftKings Sportsbook. It's easy to navigate. It has plenty of instructions for new betters in nearly limitless ways to get in on all the action. My friends and family have been loving DraftKings Sportsbook, and I know you will too. Drown, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for, if America wins a medal. That's code JOHNBOY to turn $1 into $100 in free credits for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply to DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling probably call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 9 with it you crushed that ad read i have one more point to make about rb3 times one more point about rb3 i was listening to sirius xm radio on the way home from a road trip um i believe it was last week and a point that they were that they were making about the impact of preseason because i was about because i was saying before you asked me about my opinion about rb3 um preseason is important just because somebody is getting most of the carries, like let's just say Sandro Platzgummer gets 75% of like the third and the fourth quarter carries, right? You know, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's like the clear cut winner of like RB3, which that would be wild, but I'm just using him as, as an example. Sometimes what teams will do, particularly at the skill position spot where you can kind of mask and hide a guy is they will get less attempts and less carries. If they're like showing out in practice and they know for a fact, like, oh, this dude's a stud. Because if they want to bring him onto the practice squad, they don't want this guy to be claimed by anybody else. Or if, or if they release him, let's say, if they release him, they don't want him to be claimed by anybody else. So maybe they can just sneak him onto the practice squad. Because if he shows out in the preseason, then odds are somebody else is going to want to pick him up. So keep that in mind when we're watching wide receiver five, that that's even important, for, or wide receiver four, keep that in mind for that. And also running back three, where just because somebody may not be getting the most carries in, in the preseason doesn't mean that they're not like winning the job. Interesting. That makes sense. Interesting. It does make sense. There you go. You know what does doesn't make sense? Kelvin Benjamin being told to lose weight and then being mad that they were mad that he gained weight. The Giants cut <laughs> Kelvin Benjamin. And credit to our guy Zach Rosenblatt who got the scoop and talked to Kelvin Benjamin. And Kelvin Benjamin blasted Joe Judge. So let's set the stage if you if you're not familiar. Give me some quotes. Kelvin Benjamin was 265 pounds when he came in with the Giants in their in their um, you know OTAs. The Giants, you know, they signed him. Said you need to get down to 251 for camp, though. And there's like oh, every player has that, by the way. Like there's like, hey, this is what your weight needs to be. You know, this is what your 40. You know, your bench press. Like th- there's there's goals that they're they're made like set to have. So Kelvin Benjamin, who was at 265 and told was lose 14 pounds, which in 10 weeks. Is very easy if you try. Like it's just it's just a matter of trying or not trying. You know, being a professional athlete, he gains three pounds. Gains three pounds. So, Joe Judge is going to find him. He's going to find Kelvin Benjamin for this, which is a very common practice. Guys coming in out of shape or not, you know, meeting up the needs, they they find him. And this was right at the beginning of the first practice. Kelvin Be- Dave Gelman comes over. I get they got into some type of argument, I guess, and Kelvin Benjamin walks off the field and it was cut later. Tough. Tough. I think Kelvin, Kelvin Benjamin. Benjamin. Should I? I didn't pull up direct quotes. That's okay. It, it, That's okay. It, All right. So here, moral of the story. If you want to pull up direct quotes, moral of the story. A football player who was trying out for a team 
yes, a football player that has had past success, like he loved to point out in Zach Rosenblatt's article, you know, I've, I almost had a thousand, I've had, did he have it? Did he say almost a thousand yard season or yeah, he's like, I almost he, had a thousand yards at like 200, like 60 pounds. Yeah. So good, good for you. And you know, him acting like, you know, being a part of the, you know, the Panthers that almost did something, you know, makes him the judge of, uh, you know, no pun intended, makes him the judge of, you know, who, who, who is, what teams are able to win a Super Bowl, not what coaches are able to win a Super Bowl, not. So he was given a direct order from the head coach while he was trying out, while they signed him as a tryout. And he decided, no, I'm not even going to, you know, give a damn about that direct order from the coach or that, you know, suggestion from the coach about, hey, I should do this, a direct order from a coach. And then he got mad once the coach Delusion. called him out on it. He also, this is also wild too. He got mad that judge called him out for half-assing in practice during the spring because apparently he was even doing that too. Kelvin Benjamin openly admitted that Joe Judge called him out for half-assing in practice, which means that Kelvin Benjamin was half-assing in spring practice, and he openly admitted that, and that wasn't even previously reported. But then he just decided to give that information to the public. You see my Shreddy Pitts? He said, I don't want to bash anyone, but I just felt like Joe ha has had it out to me to get me since I walked into the team building. It never felt right. The guy never even had a conversation with me until the day they signed me. Which There's is a false, clip right? on, on three days before he signed talking with Joe Judge for like 30 seconds. Now that's, you know, not much. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? He just drafted a bunch of rookies and those guys are there. Like, you know, it's not his job to go out of his way and spend time with a tryout guy. You know, and maybe he's, you know, waiting to see what you look like before he goes and has a real conversation with you. And so then, you know, he comes in and let me find the quote. Je Galvin Benjamin. Judge was like, we're going to fine you for being 17 pounds overweight. I was like, how are you going to do that? So you want me to be a smaller tight end than when I played wide receiver? He has nothing to say. He quieted down. He didn't even talk uh, to me Tuesday. The day before practice, he didn't bring all this up. I just felt like the dude didn't like me. Mr. Gettleman knew exactly what went down. It's crazy how they twist in the air about everything like it's a joke. They make it seem like we don't even matter. That's the thing about humanity. Like, one, he's just rambling about, like, <laughs> random stuff. But it's the most simple thing, dude. Like, how delusional you got to be to be told to lose 14 bound, pounds and you gain three? And you're like, why are you mad? Well, well, you want me to lose weight to play tight end? Hey, dumbass, they're not going to use you in a Levine Toy Lolo role, yeah. okay? There's a reason they want you at 250. Because they want you to be able to run about 14 pounds lighter than you came into rookie camp. Because they're not going to be using you as an inline tight end when they have Kyle Rudolph, Evan Ingram, Caden Smith, Levine Torello. In fact, you're, if he wants to say that it was a setup from the beginning, yeah, you probably were never going to make this roster from the beginning. They gave you a shot to come in and maybe prove them wrong and show that you had something from the first two years of your career. Because after that, you suck. So he comes in over, oh, three pounds over what he originally was when they told him to lose 14. It's just nuts for this guy to be mad at that. Like, and what's great about all this, Bobby, is that he's ending his NFL career right now. He's not, you know, he didn't end, he, he didn't say to Zach Rosenblatt, you know what, these guys are wrong, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to prove them wrong. So if any other NFL team wants to sign me, go for it. He took the the piss poor loser. I mean, that's what Kel Kelvin Benjamin's a loser. I mean, if really, if, if we had, you know, if we're, if we're going to summarize this entire thing, and I even said it to Art Stapleton, but Art Stapleton would never call him a loser because he's a professional. But I, you know, if there's a summary to all this, Kelvin Benjamin is a loser. So instead of being and taking the winner's mentality and the competitive mentality of I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try and get another NFL team to sign me. And, you know, Hey, I'll play wide receiver. I'll play tight end. I'll play offensive line for all I care. Cause you're approaching that weight anyway. You know, he's like, Oh, I, this has tainted my vision of the NFL. So I'm just going to retire now and spend some time on a boat. That's, that's, that's what he said in the article. It's what he said in the article. So that's a loser's mentality of, Oh, now I'm going to quit because they didn't, because I didn't get my way. You're a loser. That's what you are. You're a loser. You want to know what the most delusional part of this is? And no one really talked about it. What? Benjamin also claimed he didn't drop any passes in minicamp and felt like the Giants purposely never highlighted that on social media. What the hell goes on in this mind that like he thinks the world's get out to get him? Do you, one, do you even look at the Giants' social media? Like it's very bland. Two, what do you want them to do? Kelvin Benjamin, who you're already a walking meme, dude. So anytime your name gets mentioned, people start cracking jokes. 
What do you want them to be like? Hey, Kelvin Benjamin at minicamp didn't drop any passes. Let's give him a round of applause. I mean, what a dork, dude. Like, what is – guys, I, I almost feel bad for him a little bit because he's just so delusional. But part of me doesn't feel bad. It's like, you know what? You're taking shots at everybody else, so we'll take them. We'll fire them right back at you. Yeah. And then finishes off with bashing Joe Judge, saying he cussed too much. He, You know, he, he's never going to win a Super Bowl. Like, well, dude, you want to know what's funny about, you know, saying so, so-and-so won't win a Super Bowl? The year you missed the entire season was your quarterback's best year, and they went to the Super Bowl. And, I, and when you got hurt, it was supposed to be this big blow. And I remember I, I put together the highlight of all his touchdowns. They were all like beautiful passes by Cam Newton, where it was just everyone was a contested catch. Never yeah. any good route running, never any speed to it. It was all just Cam Newton, you know, putting tight, tight throws in on. Yeah. And there were some, you know, relatively mostly Eagle fans and Zach Rosenblatt's mentions last night trying to. Well, I don't know what they were even trying to do. Was it slander Joe Judge? Was it defend Kelvin Benjamin? I have no idea. But virtually, you know, why Why I don't think even just calling Kelvin Benjamin a loser is just being a, such a Homer Giants taken, Homer Giants bias, is that Joe Judge last year, even with the team that was like, oh, and whatever, <laughs> oh, and whatever, almost halfway through the season, had an entire team – buying into what he was doing and what he was saying, including veterans on their second contract, including veterans on their second contract. And that's the big thing. Logan Ryan's on a second contract. Leonard Williams franchise tagged basically virtually on a second contract guys that were around the league. You know, Donald Thompson was on his third head coach at that point in his career. He's got kind of the run of the mill. All these guys were bought in to what he was doing and they were a losing football team. And especially on the offense side of the ball, they were a bad offensive team, but people are bought in to what he's doing and they finished off strong. And really that's the, that's the main mechanism for nobody has said a bad thing about Joe judge where they have said, you know, like, yeah, James Bradbury even came out and said, yeah, like this ain't for everybody. That's like the worst thing we've heard about judge judge. That's the worst thing. And Calvin Benjamin is the only exception after he gets cut to really complain and moan about him i mean he's complained and moaned everywhere he's been yep. but in reality he stole food from the cafeteria he did this is true so west stein you can't you can't make this you can't make it up west steinberg which is my favorite uh parody beat reporter account which just makes up stuff to see if the world will burn around him and it did did some good stuff so he's you know puts out a you know joe you know the Giants are cutting Kelvin Benjamin because uh, that he was caught on security cameras stealing food from the cafeteria. And so, you know, some dummies, you know, quote tweeted and stuff. Giant Insider <laughs> tweets out, it seems Benjamin was caught stealing food from the cafe and bringing it home. Judge and Gettleman was having a convo with him about it and Benjamin got pissed and stormed off. Can't make this stuff up. That is the Giant Insider tweet. So one, they stole the scoop from a fake, like from, even if it wasn't a fake account, they passed it off as like, hey, this is like, this is what we're hearing through the, you know, from our sources. Yeah, and aren't they there? Aren't they like there? <laughs> yes, they're there. Supposedly. So they, so they, they do that. And then they finished ugh, just chef's kiss. The last sentence, can't make this stuff up. You literally stole it from account that made it up. I was dying laughing it's like how the you can't make this stuff up it's like they they made it up you know what literally made up giant insider it's as simple as clicking on west steinberg's account and yes the profile picture sure you know hey it seems like a real guy you know you took a stock photo of a banker offline but then you look at the banner picture and i think it's of eli manning with a bunch of reporters and then it's a lazy like attempt to Photoshop Wes's face onto like the reporter. You don't even click on it to see his profile, and you can't see the photoshopped photo of his face where Eli Manning is a bunch of bunch of reporters. It's you you can't make that up. That's the part that you can't make up. Yeah, what we're telling you is what you can't make up. And then 15 minutes later, like we're just joking, got you. No, nope, which they were not joking. Just come on. They, that was the worst thing they could have done is said. Oh, just kidding. All they had to do is like, hey, we got got. Sorry, we got got. So sorry, like, we're, either we're, you sorry, stole West Steinberg. 
you can't Sorry, say you can't finish off a joke and say can't make this stuff up you can't say something that you made up which even if it was a joke they stole it from west steinberg i mean just on <laughs> just capital f frauds my gosh i mean how, how do can't make this stuff up i mean just brutal just say you got got it all it happens to all of us danny king got got he thought jadavion J- Conley signed with the giants you just laugh at yourself afterwards just laugh at yourself not s- pretend you were joking oh my gosh i mean if we are not exposing <laughs> that it's just can't make this stuff up pulse uh, stuff pulse up. of the giants fan base bobby uh what they are well tim, you know our friend tim from florida yeah I feel is it, this where, is why I feel bad is because innocent people like Tim from Florida believe this and Tim from Florida calls in and wastes big blue kickoff lives time. It's been a while since I heard from him. Hope he's all right. Hope he's doing Tim well. From Florida is first on BBKL. Hello. Hey guys, big fan. Um, I, I wanted to ask about Nate Solder, but before that giant insider reported that Kelvin Benjamin was stealing food and that's why it was cut. Do you guys think that's a worse look on Benjamin or Joe judge for, you know, not letting him eat as much food as he wants. Oh, my God. Well, let's let's just say, I don't know if that's a joke or not. That's got to be a joke. Be, be, no, because, John, John, oh, John. Jeff Eagle. Yeah, well, that's nice. And, 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 I, and I appreciate, you know, whatever it is that they want to say. It's his freedom of speech, of course. But uh, there's no food out on the practice field. so Which is funny, Paul. It's like no one said he stole it from the practice field. Like, what are you even talking about? I would tend no, to say no, that that's, that's probably serious. meant as a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing. Oh, well, anyway. they said in the cap- but they said you literally can't make it up. So I don't think they were joking. They said in the cafeteria, not the. the let me let me, let me let me just tell you something real quickly, okay? So this is. Tr- and then Jeff Eagles. And then Jeff the Eagles goes on to explain that there is ample food in the cafeteria that they will not be running out of food anytime soon. And it's like, thank you, Jeff. You are the New York Football Giants. I would hope they would not run out of food. If Giant Insider didn't finish it off with "can't make this up," they could have they could have played it like however they wanted. And but they didn't. They said can't make this stuff up, and they played themselves so All right. hard. You know what, Bobby Skinner? You know what you can't make up? You can't make up just how good Roman. That was a really abrupt transition. You can't make up just how really just how good Roman is. One of our sponsors for today's show. Just like Calvin Benjamin, uh, you can get Roman from the comfort of your own. Home and Calvin Benjamin's, I think he might be approaching that weight where he might be struggling with a little bit of ED, probably getting up there in age too. So, guess what? With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation, ongoing care for ED, all the comfort and privacy of your home. They are a US licensed healthcare professional. They will work with you to find the best treatment plan if medication is appropriate. It ships to you free with two day shipping. That's fast. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. Getting started, it's simple. Get Roman.com slash world and complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. I hate leaving home. I've been, I haven't been home in all day and I'm really mad. Complete an online visit today. Connect with a doctor. Take care of it. Take care of that ED. Get Roman.com slash world. Go to that site now to get $15 off your first month. Straightforward way to take care of your ED. Get Roman.com slash world. Get started now. Save $15 off your first month and treatment. Calvin Benjamin. You'll thank us later. All right. Qu- quick other things. Blake Martinez is on the COVID list. He said he's vaccinated, so hopefully we'll get him back. Reggie Raglan on the non-football injury list. Uh, we don't know what happens yet. But what I will say, the good thing is that Carter Coughlin's getting reps over Devontae Downs. So it's Crowder and Coughlin getting the first team reps. I'll throw both those guys out. Aziz Ojolari and Lorenzo Carter gain the top two edge reps, by the way, which is very, like, like Especially you know, in Star Camp. Yeah, they don't like to give rookies the starting reps to start camp, even if they have all the intentions in the world to start them. So the fact that uh, Aziz is getting those over a Fetty is uh it's kind of big. Um, so when we get more information on those things, we'll pro- we'll can talk more about them next week. Uh, Clayton Thorson and Brett Heggie got the first laps of training camp. D- Daniel Jones got some. Nick Gates got one. Uh, and the Giants brought in for visits Cody Core. Who we you know we know him very well. He tore his ACL last year. Was a, a good special teamer. Sean Mannion, quarterback, and then Todd Davis, who's played a lot of football at linebacker. Which is, if if Reggie Ragland's injury is serious, then I can see them bringing Todd Davis in to actually compete um, to to get some playing time. I mean, he's played a, he's you know had like 500 tackles in his NFL career. Or got Kale Garrett. 
Probably get yep. some good run too. Hopefully he's, he he got he got a deflection in practice on on the first day. So how about that? How about that? How about that? All right. We now have an interview with the one, the only, Art Stapleton. All right. Well, you know this this guy we're having on just brought up Sam Beal, and last time he brought up Sam Beal on our show, he opted out of the season like like two or three hours later. We're welcoming <laughs> on of the record North Jersey. USA Today, the one and only Art Stapleton. Art, how are you, and how does it feel to be back in person uh, with uh, on the Giants beat? What's up, fellas? And, uh, you know, it feels feels pretty good, a little strange, and I'm still upset with you guys that I don't have any stickers or anything anything talking Giants to, uh, you know, you guys kind of forgot me. I come I, on. I'm, and- I'm – I don't get embarrassed much, but not doing that embarrasses me. So, you know, at FanFest, <laughs> you just tell me your license plate number and you'll you'll come back to a nice surprise all over your car. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm worried if I tell you my license plate number. I don't know what you guys will do to my car once I get out. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Love our, the, the, our president's sticker just everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I only have four of those left. No one's No one's ever getting those ones again. Um, until two, 2024 but but I mean how does it feel like it's it's even from the outside looking in it's like seeing Joe Judge not through a zoom screen when we watch these interviews is is weird how does it feel yeah you know I mean guys you, you're standing around and uh, you know we're talking waiting for guys to come out and stuff and you you don't realize like I said this to Joe Judge last week when I when I had my my phone interview with him is, is you know I've been in the room with him three times once on his introductory press conference, once at his combine press conference, and then he does like a breakaway. And then I actually had a one-on-one with him at the combine, kind of a get to know you. So the fourth time I got to see Joe Judge was on his first day, you know, Wednesday when camp opened. So it's, uh, it's been a long while. I mean, it's, it's still a little strange. I mean, everybody who played on the team last year, I mean, we never met them. You know, James Bradbury, never met him in person until until today. And even then, uh, it still feels a little weird. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not sure how it's going to go over the next couple of weeks. But I um, I certainly prefer this versus what we had last year. Um, and it's it's definitely interesting. It, it just feels nice. But you brought up um, your one on one with Joe Judge. And that's that's what I wanted to lead it off with. Um, is there anything new you learned from him with that? Because it's, I mean, I know that atmosphere has to be so much different than one just pressers with everyone there, but pressers on Zoom to have that one-on-one uh, call with them. Um, you know what? No, it's just a continuation. I mean, I feel like, I feel like surprisingly, I was able to build a pretty good relationship with him last year. Um, he's not a difficult nut to crack. Uh, he's pretty upfront with everything, um, so. I think, I think from that perspective, it's, you know, it's just more of the same, uh, but definitely in person, you, you just kind of, I don't know. I mean, we haven't had that yet where you can kind of, you know, shake somebody's hand or move, move with them all on the side of a press conference afterwards and talk. Uh, but I just think he is who he is. I mean, he's intense. He believes in what he's doing. Uh, and if you're not part of it, well, he has no use for you. And that, that may sound cold blooded, but like in the case of Calvin Benjamin, that, that's pretty much pretty much the norm in, in this program that he's trying to build. Yeah, we'll ask about Kelvin kind of at the end, and maybe we'll have some laughs about that. Or at least we're gonna have some laughs, but you're a professional. Um yeah, but Joe <laughs> Judge, I mean, what really separates him. It, it just seems like he's a people person and he's authentic. And I think you can kind of get to know him just as easily through zoom as kind of in person, but you're right. There is nothing like shaking somebody's hand. And, you know, I don't even know if you can still even do that. Cause you're it's, it's funny seeing your press conferences. You're all still kind of socially distanced, but you're still in person, but let's talk about Shane Lemieux. Now I know there's, we don't have a concrete diagnosis at this point, but basically, you know, you were there, maybe you saw it from a distance. What was the feel as he was being carted off um, the practice field today with an apparent elbow injury? What was the feel? Well, it's funny you say that as we're, as we're uh, recording this, I just got an update on Shane Lemieux and it was not an elbow injury that I initially said that it looked like he was holding his elbow. 
And unfortunately, it sounds like it's a knee. Now, I don't know the severity of it, uh, but that is the word that it's going. It is a knee injury. Um, and obviously, that's not what you want to hear. But there was no signs. We don't even know what happened because they were on the far field and we were blocked uh, by uh, members of the team, not intentionally, or maybe it was intentional, but who knows? It's just a product of training camp. Um, so that's it, Justin. It's, it sounds like it's a knee. I just got a text as you and I are talking. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, obviously that's not a good, not a good thing on the second day of training camp, uh, depending on the severity of things, but uh, that's where we're all with the meal. And they're you, not you, even in full pants until next Thursday, right? Uh, two, next Tuesday, but yeah. Next I Tuesday. Mean, so okay. this had to be, uh, I mean, you hope it wasn't a non-contact situation. I mean, they are engaging uh, and then kind of letting each other go. They're in shorts and helmets. Um, so, again, it, it's got to be a wait and see. This is kind of a developing thing. I don't want to overstate too much uh, just based on what I have. All right. I know is, is that it is a knee. And um, look, there's enough attention on this offensive line and they need to get it right up there. Um, they're counting on the Mew. So um, this is something that, you know, is not, not, not the, uh, not the way you want to open camp, like I said. Uh, so hopefully it's not anything more serious. You know, maybe he goes back and tests are inconclusive. Uh, or at least negative for any type of tears. But um, yeah, it sounds like a knee. And there was no sign, like I tweeted when it happened. Um, he was on the back of the cart. Uh, and sometimes, you know, guys get carted off just because it's the, the distance of the practice fields. You guys have been at Quest. You know, you know, if it's on the far field, it's pretty far. You're not going to make yeah. a guy who, who might have a knee issue, you know, walk off. Uh, there were no – it wasn't like there were ice packs or – or anything like that on his knee. Um, so you keep your fingers crossed if you're the Giants, Giants fans, and hope that uh, that Lemieux is okay and he can get back on the field. But uh, right now, I, I think they're probably still evaluating what's going on. Yeah, and kind of maybe transitioning away from that since we don't really have a ton more information just about Shane Lemieux and everything like that. Kenny Galde and Daniel Jones, they've been putting in a lot of extra work, ton of extra work, whether it be on the side during practice or even after practice. So is that something that Jones has done with previous wide receivers in year one or two? Or is this something that's kind of unique to the new Daniel Jones, Kenny Galde situation? Because we got to get these two guys in line with each other and the chemistry up kind of like ASAP. Well, when, when it usually happens to give you a little context, it's, um, there'll be random periods during the course of the practice where, you know, it'll be a special teams uh, period and the quarterbacks and some of the wide receivers who are not on special teams like Kenny Galladay are just kind of standing around. And as you guys know, Joe judge does not appreciate standing around. So it's kind of built into practice where on an off period per se, they'll go off on another field. They'll be with Jason Garrett. Um, you know, maybe maybe Jerry Shaplinski will be there. Uh, and they'll just kind of be going over routes. And I, I think it reminds me um, of Eli and Odell used to do that a lot. Uh, they used to work on stuff after practice. You'd see them running routes. Uh, part of that was because of the chemistry. If Odell wasn't at OTAs but only came to minicamp. Uh, but Daniel and, and Kenny have been building up chemistry off the field and they've had some workouts this spring uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they kind of attacked this as a team effort and kind of looked at it and said you know let's get on the same you know let, let's kind of work through these things you know maybe some of it is through Daniel's eyes maybe some of it is through Kenny's eyes what do you like what do you don't like um, so it's been interesting it's always why when you're covering training camp it's oh to me it's always interesting to see what's going on beyond the actual drill that they're working on. Because sometimes you see things that, you know, aren't necessarily part of the, the plan, uh, like a, a Jones and, uh, and Kenny Galladay. But there are, also, there are also kind of periods where we've seen Sterling Shepard, uh, Kenny Galladay, and Evan Ingram with Jones. And 
like the quarterbacks, co- you know, whether it's Jerry or, or Jason um, Garrett, they're working in the end zone. You know, they're going through They're working on specific routes. Like Sterling Shepard was running, running a route that was almost like a, 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 a spin route in, in the end zone. Um, and I don't feel like I'm giving away information. It's not like, you know, they're reinventing the wheel, but um, you can see they're working on timing, working, fine tuning stuff. And at, sometimes I wonder if it's as much for the receiver as it is the quarterback or vice versa when they're getting together. So long winded answer. Anytime Daniel Jones can spend with Kenny Galladay and his receivers is a good thing. Um, and Galladay was a little hit or miss on day one, uh, drop some passes. They, they did look, uh, off kilter a little bit. Uh, but the second practice today, they hit some passes. Nothing is really live at this point. So it's kind of hard to judge. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jones and Galladay are going to be a huge connection for this team. So the more they can do uh, to, you know, shorten that, lessen that uh, learning curve, the better. You you mentioned at the start, uh, you know, how the practice is like, they, there's really no standing around, which is kind of like unique. You know, I, I was down at the senior bowl and, and Brian Flores seemed to be doing the same thing. And it's hard, it's hard to keep up with. It's like, you got, you know, two teams on separate sides going full speed. The, the like just no, no breaks, which by the way, at the senior bowl, you definitely bullied me into ambushing Joe judge. <laughs> but it worked for you. I mean, it you, did. You it did. Like you. you got, you got some good content for it. And <laughs> next time you cross paths with them, you, you just said, remember, I was that maniac who, who approached you and Pat in the in the parking lot down in Mobile. Remember yeah, me? Yeah, you you and everyone else bullied me into it. And thank God I asked them the right question. Because any other question, they're probably like, go away. But I asked them about the shake and bake, and it ended up working out. Um, but as far as I know, it's only been a couple of days in. But last year, a guy like Devontae Down showed up out of nowhere, where it's like we wasn't even on our radar going into camp. Do you think that is there another guy who might be like the leader in the clubhouse to be that is it like a guy like kale garrett is you know the david sills hype train going to start again is there someone that's out there that seems to be a little more involved that you might not have expected you know it, it is a good question bobby i i do think it's too early i don't want to you know i don't want to dismiss the question i'll give you something that i'm going to end up writing over the next couple of days which i think is is a very cool story the way it's going to work out um the Giants wide receiver room is, you know, we know what the top looks like, but there's a lot of competition at the bottom. We know still, you mentioned Sills and his relationship with Daniel Jones and, you know, Saquon even through, you know, at his camp through a shout out to Sills as one of the guys who he's kind of been working with this off season, you know, helping him stay grounded, stay focused, that kind of thing. Um, but the Dante Pettis, John Ross relationship, I find fascinating because you're talking about two guys at at the university of Washington who were studs. I mean, teams feared them. They were opposite. You know, they're both on the perimeter. They were both perimeter wide receivers. And when they get to the NFL, obviously Ross has been labeled as a bust. The 49ers gave up on Pettis and both of them are very close. And now they're with the giants. And I think, they might be competing for that wide receiver five spot. I mean, granted, health is going to have to matter this preseason. Uh, Whoever's healthy, it may be a battle of attrition to see who's left in that wide receiver room. But Ross and Pettis have an interesting story. I got to talk to Pettis today a little bit. Uh, They're very close, um, you know, and I think that, you know, they're talented guys. I mean, you watch Ross – on kickoffs on day one and the speed is real. I mean, we all know about his speed. We saw the combine, everything else in the spring. We didn't see much because he was banged up. He looks pretty good right now. I mean, I don't want to blow him up a little bit, but so I think what Pettis showed the end of last season and what Ross has shown me the first couple of days, just talent wise, it'll be interesting because I think the giants, um, you know, depth has been a, an issue the last couple of years. They've relied a lot. You look at last season when they started with what three three undrafted guys in uh, that they were going to count on at some point. Um, you know, when you look at 
you know, Benjamin Victor and Austin Mack, um, even Derek Dillon was looked at as, you know, does he play a little bit? And then Sills and Bachman. I mean, you're talking about a different level of talent, in my opinion, with a John Ross and even a Dante Pettis. So um, that would be my, my answer to that. I can't say that they're lighting it up already, but I do think it's going to become an intriguing situation. And it would not surprise me at all if one of those guys starts making plays in the preseason and games and fans start getting behind really what are two reclamation projects for the giants at the position. Yeah. yeah they had two. a combined 32 touchdowns uh, their last year at Washington. And it's, it is like you mentioned, it's funny how it's flip flop where last year at this time, it was like wide receiver four and five. It was begging for someone to take hold of that where they had Damian Ratley and CJ board, you know, on the roster, you know, off of, off of waivers after, after a cut down day. And then now this year with the addition of Galladay and Tony, you have guys with talent like Pettis uh, or Pettis Ross. Um, and it's like, well, one of these guys is probably not going to make it. So it's kind of weird. It's, it's, it's a good thing to have, you know, that situation flip-flop from year to year. Yeah, two former high draft picks too. And, you know, Ross actually, he was returning kicks, which he hasn't returned an NFL kick in his life, but college, he returned those kicks. And kind of speaking of high draft picks, you know, maybe – it will start to wrap up. We'll start to wrap up on this. Speaking of high draft pick, um, Kelvin Benjamin um, from the fan side of it, Art, you know, he looks like a loser. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up from the fan side of it. He looks like a loser. You're a professional who would never say that about somebody, but from the fan side of it, that's kind of like what we're thinking right now. What is your take on it? Uh, the whole Kelvin Benjamin situation, particularly your perspective on kind of went down during that conversation between Gettleman judge and him where he, you know, reportedly stormed off the field by, uh, by some reputable people, but I reputable, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> right. I understand. Um, I, I think, you know, and I, I'll give credit to Zach Rosenblatt who, of NJ.com who had the interview with Kelvin last night. I didn't realize the, the telephone lines were burning to Kelvin <laughs> Benjamin's cell, but uh, credit to Zach and in all seriousness, credit to Zach for getting those, those comments. Uh, that being said, those those comments, I mean, it was kind of self-incriminating on Benjamin's part. I mean, he brings up the idea that the Giants told him in June that they'd like to see him drop about 14 pounds to be at a playing weight of 251 for training camp. Now, you're a guy, I don't care what your history's been, you're, you're, you got signed as a triad. You are, you are transitioning positions. Anybody with any self-awareness looks at this depth chart and says, you know what, I'm a long shot to make this team. If they tell me I got to get down, maybe I don't get the 251. Maybe it's an unfair ask, but maybe I get the 256 and they're looking at good job, Kelvin, you're working. Maybe, maybe it's good to play at 256. The guy gained three pounds. It's crazy. And look, I'm the last person who should be talking about weight gain. Okay. But the reality is, you know, you're in that position and, and the, the training staff and the head coaches and the position coach tell you, we think this is where you should be. So you could, so you can make the most of this opportunity when you report to training camp. And he says, well, I'd rather gain weight and gain muscle than lose, lose those pounds. I mean, to me, I'm surprised Joe judge's head didn't pop off. I mean, that is not what you want in this program. I mean, this guy, he's here on a, on a tryout basis. It's still a tryout. What message do you send to your team if you just look the other way and say, all right, Kelvin, we understand you're a big guy. Let's just play at the weight you want to play at, and we'll, we'll see where it is. I mean, you know, look, I don't know what transpired. I did some digging last night. From what I understand, it was a cumulative thing. So this was not just Kelvin Benjamin showing up uh, you know, having, ga having gained three pounds. Um, I, I do know that, I mean, look, this is procedure in the NFL guys. I mean, we all know it. It happens all the time. The training staff tells these guys, we need you to lose weight. We need you to gain weight. It's a constant battle. You walk through the facility, there are signs up way in day and guys get fined for not hitting weight. If the, if a weight issue is on the table, so if Joe Judge went to Kelvin Benjamin and said, hey, look, um, you know, we're going to have to find you because 
you know, you, you came in overweight and he, he went ballistic or he got upset or he decided that Joe Judge was being too much of a hard ass. Well, then to me, that's just Kelvin Benjamin showing that he really doesn't want to be here and doesn't want to be a part of this program. And as James Bradbury said today, it ain't for everyone. And Joe Judge, whether you like him or don't like him, and whether you think he has to win before he does this, that's his personality. That's his way. And I think the guys here have bought in. I think Kelvin Benjamin was probably a little bit of a sore loser uh, in terms of what he said about Judge. If he turns out right and Joe Judge never wins a Super Bowl, maybe we'll go back to July 28th of 2021 and say, boy, Kelvin Benjamin was right on about Joe Judge. I don't get that sense from players who are in this locker room. Um, I, you know, look, they're, some of whom are not blowing smoke. I mean, they know Judge is hard. I mean, he's hard on guys. Um, so, I don't know. And the stuff about the language, I mean – Look, if he's if his coaches and Joe Judge are swearing in front of team employees that are not part of the team, or if he's swearing at players and calling them out uh, consistently, and that's causing problems, well, then that's an issue. And then you know, good for you, Kelvin Benjamin, for for shining a light on it. But I, I just, as Joe Judge said in his press conference. 32 teams are going to be cutting a lot of guys over the next couple weeks. Um, if we're going to go for exclusives for every guy, and I'm paraphrasing, not directly quoting, if we're going to go for exclusives on every guy, there's going to be a lot of criticism of coaches and administrators who cut guys, uh, like I said, in the NFL. It's just unfortunate that it played out that way and probably a little blown, overblown on our part, uh, but – that's the way it is. I know. Yeah. I know you guys are scrambling to get Kelvin Benjamin on the show. I, we should have, and and just like pranked him back, and been, been like gave him like thirty seconds. Like, all right, that's all the time we got. Um, <laughs> uh, so hopefully we don't hear anything from Taquan Mizzle in the next couple of days. Our, <laughs> hey, that was my tweet, Bobby. You, I know, I know. I, I had to steal go, it from hey, you. Don't go, don't go stealing tweets unless you can verify the information. Well, I speaking we of which. Lost- I think we kind of lost that, right? We learned that lesson yesterday for some of our Well, friends. what's it like knowing that you'll never, as a beat reporter, amount to Wes Steinberg? <laughs> oh, man. That guy's been a bane of my existence a little bit. <laughs> I hated him at first, but the out. last couple of weeks, I love him. He called, well, he, he called me out one time, and, and um, you know, I, I don't know. It's I, I know it's funny. I know some things are funny, but – it's, it's a hard thing when we go back and you guys have kind of appreciated that too, because you, know, you go from having a show and trying to, you know, being fans to now people look at you for content. You know what I mean? And you, you're serious about the stuff that you put out there. You don't fool around. It doesn't matter if you have a blue check or if you're at the facility every day. Um, it could kind of get confusing for the average fan. I mean, I can't tell you how many private messages I got last night about, is this real? Is this true? You know, Wes breaks a lot of stories. And I'm looking at him going, first off, we don't even know, we don't even know if Wes exists. He My does. guess is it's like does. a banker photo or something. Somebody found it when he first started. It's it's not even that's not even the real anyways. <laughs> but but anyway, I think we've spent enough time on Wes. But yes, uh it, it was it was entertaining to see um to see what kind of integrity goes on on Twitter and who buys what? There's a lot of things people sell on, on Twitter and no sarcasm fun. So the way well, we go, but yeah, well, take one. is uh is calling me at five today. So I got that for you. All right. Well, we'll let you go. We know you got to prep for that art. Where can people find you? And, and of course, thank you for coming on again. Uh, you can find me at North Jersey.com. Uh, it's also part of the New York, the USA today network. But that's the best way. You guys know Twitter, Instagram. I'm art underscore Stapleton. Um, and if you're a fan of my coverage, if you guys don't mind a little plug, well, well, one little plug, the idea that, you know, subscriptions matter to us, digital subscriptions. And um, if you value my coverage, you like have, you know, like what I have to say with these guys and everywhere else you find me, uh, if you can make the, the, uh, the commitment, it certainly matters to us. And, um, 
hey, just like you guys, you're going to you get a little competition. I'll let the cat out of the bag. I'm starting restarting and rebooting a podcast for myself on the all right, that's all the time uh, we have uh thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't be competitors we'll just be colleagues and maybe i can get you guys on uh on my podcast when uh when it finally launches and we can uh we can have some fun but i love coming on with you guys and i appreciate the work that you guys put in and the passion that you have so um like i said keep up the great work of, of course are and like i said you know you guys are always running you guys are always running awesome deals you know and it it, uh, it comes in the handy you know like the, your joe judge interview uh it was uh it was nice to already have that so art everyone go follow him art thanks again for coming on all right guys see you soon all right thank you art stapleton for coming on the show everyone go check out his stories give him a follow all that good stuff we really do appreciate art coming on We'll be back next week. Obviously, a full slate of, of PPPs on Monday, Wednesday, and, and Thursday. But Tuesday, we have our regular episode. Dan Benton of the Giants Wire. He's been covering the Giants for a long time for them. We'll be on the show, so we'll uh, we'll have him back on. Uh, have a grand old time. Justin, anything before we uh, send these guys off for the weekend? No, I love Dan Benton. Um, excited for another week of PPPs. Second week. Uh, we're here. We're in it. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, tell some of your friends too. We're also like two ratings away from 900 on the Apple podcast app. So if you want to get us there, get us there. All right. Love you all. Always Have a best weekend. to ask in the last second. All right. We appreciate you guys. See, ya. see you next week. Until then, let's go big blue. <laughs>